Hi, I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Once again, How to Paint Watercolours with me, Colin. <coughs> As you know by now, I've stretched my paper. This is £140 Bockingford. And I'm just leaving a thin film of water on the paper. Just removing any excess water off the edges. This is pure Oriolin, just bringing it right across the mountains. So that's Oriolin. This is a red orange plus bright red just to bring it up a bit. I'll just pull some of this in. I'm going to bring some in the mountain there that I like that colour. So this is carmine and bright red. I just want to shoot that in across the sky. Be a touch on the top of the mountain there. I want to drop bits of colour as we go on, just to strengthen things up and just, you know, just add a little bit more to it. Almost like orange clouds, but these will diffuse in the water. Some magenta. This is pure magenta. I'm just going to drop that there, push it round it just a little bit. Forgive my arm. This is straightforward indigo. It's quite thick as it will dry, 20 to 30% lighter, you have to be aware of that. Just pulling the colours together a little bit. I don't mind it hitting the purple, sorry, I don't mind that hitting the yellow, as it will turn into a grey. Just adding some more indigo on the top. And into that indigo at the top, this is indigo burnt umber with some magenta in it just to really deepen it and we're really just going to drop this in and just let it play a little bit on all on its own drop some at the top here i'm going to drop it in the corner to say you are tempted to fiddle with your washes but don't this can be a mistake bring a really dark area in here see how it's buried my mountain we will be finding that shortly and I really am going to leave it quite thick there where the mountain is with a, a damp brush I'm just going to pull where I think I drew it just beginning to see where the pencil line is there now might even just pull a bit of indigo down here Take any excess paint off the board around the edges of the, the painting. This will help to minimise any runbacks or cauliflowers forming. Just before I let it go, I nearly forgot. I'm just adding a bit more straight magenta into the sky. Just dropping it in very gently. We're going to leave that to dry. Okay, welcome back. <clears throat> I hope you can see that. I mean, that to me makes a far more <coughs> interesting sky. I'm going to re wet these back mountains. <coughs> Do that little one first. I think you should make your paintings interesting. It also helps you grow as an artist. I'm going to take some of the sky colour. I'll tell you why. Because it contains the blue, and with the magenta, it contains the red. And into that, I'm going to add the orange which contains the other colour, the yellow, and some red. And you see the brown that it's making there. Well, I actually want to make that just slightly on the orange side. And for me, that will do. And even if you add a brown to it, you've got to remember that the brown is actually a red. I will get into explaining a lot more of this, I think. I don't think, you know, I think it does need to be explained, the colour wheel and everything. I'm going to check that because I want these really pale. So I'm going to check the colour strength of this one first because I can always weaken it. 
and as the board is set at an angle, about 30 degrees, maybe a bit more, it will should hopefully flow down slightly. And of course as it comes down I want it to really pail off. I want this these mountings to almost be like a stain. Soften off the bottoms. Soften it into that orange. Just soften away the edge. So you get the mountain to disappear into the sky. Then into that I just want to add just a drop of red. So you almost won't see it, but it is there. Once again, a little background hill here, just a stain, very little on this. So I want some of the yellow underwash to show through. Oh, my head's not getting in the way. It does when I have to pull the camera out this far. Just a little bit more there as it goes into the dark. Soften this into nothing absolutely into nothing and I may just put a little drop of orange here as it's in the sky like I say it just keeps softening off the bottom soften any hard edges that may form you can see them that's it okay some more clean water and I can see that uh, the sky is granulated there I kind of like that actually I'm going to leave it and we'll pretend it's uh, clouds that are just coming off the top of this mountain peak here. I want to drop some Oriolan yellow just along here. And into that I want to drop some of that orange that we made. It just strengthens up the edge. Very gently pulling it down. So I don't want these to be too strong. I don't want it to have a lot of interest. I like I can bring it stronger down here. It just helps to define it. As you come down here with a damp brush, soften the bottom off. You can even drop some of the orange in as well, just for good measure. Just dropping colour into this really now, lifting it back up a little bit. I'm going to take some of this brown but I'm actually going to darken it once again just to bring it more forward. And I'm just feeding this in. There's some trees here so I don't want it to be too dark, I don't want it to uh, cover them up. Darken it a little bit more. This is a mixture of indigo and burnt umber I'm just adding to that. just wanted to have some real dark. Just feeding a little bit more in. Just strengthen it up. Just soften all this out because there's a line of trees here that we've got to put in and there's a little line of trees at the back here. I hope you notice we're coming forward all the time. You've got your sky in. You've got your background hills, this is your background, this is your middle ground and in here is your foreground. So now I'm just going to leave all that to dry. Okay now your background mountains dry, I'm going to bring a line of water here just where these trees are. Okay I'm going to do this with a rigger brush and I think I want to go back to mixing some of that orange into there for a different, slightly different colour. Brown and orange together, and it's just... You won't see them behind them trees. So, we'll just put them in, we know they're there. Such of the aureole in, as they come down here, into the sunlight. You can drop some in here on the sides. Just changes them up a bit. Just one or two dots and dashes just to fool the eye. Softening off the bottoms once again, just allowing some paint to come out. Just for a little bit of mist. It's going to wet a ridge line here as well. <clears throat> it's 
stronger this time. Just pull them into start above the water and then pull it into the water, making them all different sizes, different lengths, so they don't look like soldiers. Just again some of the stronger areola in down here. Drop a little bit in. And maybe some of the darker colour here. Then for the first time, mix a bit of green. This is indigo, burnt umber and aureolin. Once again, soften everything out. I'm just gonna pull that into nothing. Then we're going to leave that to dry. I'm taking some clean water and I'm gonna wet the whole the background apart from the rocks that I've got here around the river just making sure I've got the area wet that I want I want to come across this way and drop some of the areolin in quite strong at the front so it gets weaker towards the back and you come forward strengthen it up Always remembering that it will dry a lot lighter. A couple of shots of orange in, I think, kind of like that. This is where our dark green comes into play here. Don't want too strong at the moment. Pulling it in from the edge. Damp brush just weakening it off towards the back. A little bit of stronger colour here. Once again I'm just adding some of the orange from the sky into it. As it hits the green it will pale and it will turn brown. It just saves you mixing it in the palette. Not forgetting to just strengthen your areolin up in parts. And then we can leave that to dry off a little bit. So we're going to give this about 10 minutes and we'll just clean up the edges with a, a rolled up kitchen towel. Just like that really, just, just round the edges. And we're going to leave that to dry for a minute or two. Okay, we're going to come to the middle ground trees and I want to add some orange to these. So I'm just pulling the tops of the trees out with a, a very fine detail brush. And just on the top here, where it will be catching the, uh, the light, just going to add a little bit of colour. Then with some oriolin, I just want to drop a little bit in, just on the tops. And then with that very strong green, but I've weakened it down, we can then continue to put these in all the colours together once again just dropping the aureole in just on the right hand side slightly darker mix of the same colour of green indigo burnt umber and aureole in as we come down to the bottom I'll just bring this into the into the ground just adding a little bit more colour just to help it softening it once again. Just a hint of shadow. Trying not to overdo this. I can take some of the strong orange here and look into where my tree was. And this is very strong. I think there was two here. Bring a taller one here. Then into that. This is just a round brush, there's nothing spectacular about this, it's the simple brushes. Just making sure where they are as I come down. Once again, I just want to drop some areola in into it. Continue with this orange a bit further down. Now I'm going to come into the very, very dark green, almost black. Up 
lot of the paint at the bottom. This will help. See where I've got paint on the bottom there. I'm then going to take a damp brush, which is a wet brush with most of the water taken off. And then I'm just going to put a little blob. I'm going to pull the tree into the ground. Okay. And you see how that roots the tree in. Just pulls it into the ground. And it just allows you to add a little bit more paint. Damp brush once again. And at this point, let's just pull some shadow out. And some of the darker mixture. Just adding some of the darker mixture one side here at the bottom just to add a little bit of variety to that green. Just soften that in. Fine detail brush, just pull one or two pieces out. Just some of the orange. Just pulling the tops out. Dropping some of the aureola in, letting it mix with the orange. I want these to be a little lighter um, in strength because they're in the almost the full light. I'm just going to add spots of it in to the damp paint here just to help the transition. Just softening that in very gently. Once again, just a touch of the really dark green on the bottom. Some water on the end of the brush and just pull the colour in. Always remember there's a shadow under the tree. Soften that off at the bottom. I just want to put a few dry brush strokes. Obviously softening the back off. As you come forward, soften the edges in. I also want to bring just a, a few strokes on this side, softening the back ones off. Let's re wet this areola in, it's dried a little bit. And I'm just going to put a wash of this on the these back rocks here. Bring it into the grass. And into that, drop some orange. Just take some clean water and soften that in. Damp brush. Then with some of our brown that we made from indigo and burnt umber, you can add this in. And I'm just gently putting this in, and I'm trying to show the cracks in these rocks with it and darker at the bottom darker on this side just soften it round into the yellow I think I'll drop some of the green in it just maybe a little bit of moss and then with this edge just soften it into the grass in the dark once again so just to the bottom and just allowing it to bleed into the grass soften it once again some rocks here in the waterfall a touch of the orange and at the bottom of the waterfall we have some foam so I'm just going to wet where the foam is going to be and I actually want to drop some of the sky colour in there, but very weak. Put a little bit more water to that. This is the indigo with magenta. And just a touch of burnt humber. This has to be so weak, it's just a stain. And I think we may just have a little touch of the orange in that. Just a little bit, not too strong. And start at the top and this is the same colour as the the sky 
indigo, magenta and burnt umber. I'm just going to dry brush drag it over the top. Starting at the top and just allowing the hit and miss and that's basically all I want to do without maybe soften one or two edges in. I'm just going to re-wet part of the river here. We'll make this side here just a little bit of deeper water. I am going to paint over them rocks I've decided. And once again with some of the Uriol end, dry brush. We're going to go into the water and I'm trying to just create a few ripples. Touch of the orange, but it's a very, very dry brush again. Now, some of the sky color, dry brush once again, maybe a little strong, so I'm going to take some off. Just softening this in, it's a little bit strong. Taking some water on the brush. strokes of magenta into it, it's in the sky, peeling this off, some orange, just a touch of some colours, a little bit more burnt umber into the indigo, and we can add some deep pools. Gently softening this in, it's all horizontal strokes, cracks in these rocks, <clears throat> with some dark, any dark really, indigo and burnt umber, pick out one or two lines, just want to sharpen this up, a little dark here, <clears throat> just to emphasise that rock, flick up one or two blades of grass, twiggy brush kind of thing here, like them little bush scrubs that you get. Just a little bit more interest. Getting into that, I just want to put a, <clears throat> a streak, a light streak. Very gently, just lift a little bit of paint out. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm going to let that dry. Okay, <clears throat> painting's all dry now. There's just a, a couple of things to do to it. I could go on and on and on, but um, you have to come to a point where you say enough is enough. <laughs> Otherwise the video would be quite some length. I'm just scratching in one or two dead branches on these trees with a, with a craft knife. I hope you can see that. I don't want to put too much on. a couple more things to do. I want to put some wind streaks onto where the water's uh, deep here. Attempting to keep these horizontal. do any more to that to be honest so now we get round to the best bit <clears throat> this is where you get to sign it mount it and frame it I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please click the like button and subscribe subscribers are always welcome and like I've said before subscribing costs you nothing and at the end of this video I will leave some suggestions for some other videos that I've made should you wish to view them just click on them it'll take you straight to them and if you want to see the full list of videos, I will leave a link in the description box. And if you click on that, it will take you straight to them. So once again, thank you very much for watching.